genre. Uh, will you all just listen to me for a second? No, Min, I love the guy, but Simon's gone too far this time. You can't just drop a robot version of yourself into the group and not tell anyone. Technically, I'm more of an android. I know you're technically more of an android. Specifics like that may seem trivial, but they're important to my identity. I'm sorry. I'll try to do better in the future. Look, I know Simon messed up, but he's dealing with a lot, okay? We've all been dealing with a lot. That doesn't mean he can just lie to us like this for months. But you don't know all the facts. Simon, it's us. We just want to talk. We know about the secret android, buddy. We're not here to attack you. We're just trying to figure out what's going on. Speak for yourself, man. I feel hoodwinked. Bamboozled. I feel like one of my best friends has been keeping me out of the loop of some pretty serious shit again. I mean, what kind of excuses is he going to have this time? I... Hello, all. Hey, there he is. This one's real, guys. V- Victor, is that you? Good to see you again, pal. You're free. How did you get out? Simon, you're... You're in a wheelchair? Oh, uh... Yes. I would have thought Mindy already filled you in on that fact. Uh, no, you asked me not to, remember? Victor might have spilled the beans about the android, but I wouldn't tell them why, and I definitely wouldn't say anything about the wheelchair. Ah, yes. Very good. Thank you, Mindy, because otherwise this might have been unbearably awkward. Dueling Genre Productions presents Heat by Night, Episode 35, Comic Con. Written by Scott Corelli and Nick Jimenez. So, to sum up, I believed that the only way to entirely focus on saving Victor, as well as diagnosing my degenerative state, was to build an android copy to pose as the real me while I shut myself away in the lab. But now that Victor is back, and without my help, I see this course of action may have been a mistake. Oh, was isolating yourself from the people who care about you the most while your body deteriorated and your mind was trapped in a self-made feedback loop of guilt and regret a mistake, Simon? Who could have guessed? Jeff, not helpful. I'm just saying, how many times do we have to tell this knucklehead that we're his friends and we can help him before he believes us? But after the tough love weapons and that business with Charlie and the overachievers... I didn't think I deserved your help. Or your friendship, for that matter. Dude, we forgave you for that. But I couldn't forgive myself. I hurt all of you. I I trapped Victor in a digital prison. Well, Simon, as far as prisons go, yours was pretty much the best case scenario. I mean, it was awesome. Awesome? It was basically paradise, man. Like a nonstop vacation. Great food, great views, great company. Wait, where is she? Where's Atlas? Is Atlas a person, or is this more of an I made a volleyball into a friend sort of thing? Atlas is an AI program. My father made her for me when I was young. He was out of town a lot and thought I should have someone else to talk to who wasn't Judith. Was Judith that sweet elderly woman who brought us those sandwiches once and then said I looked like a scarecrow? Yes, that's her. Mm, Not a fan. Why are you looking for Atlas, Victor? I met Atlas when I first woke up in the program, actually. Uh, She told me right away that she was an artificial intelligence, but she was also the only person or being I could actually interact with in any meaningful way. As a sort of computer person myself, it just never really felt weird. We watched movies and TV together, took walks on the beach, ate good food. So much good food. She's a good friend. I'm very glad you two were able to hit it off. And the good news is that if you were able to exit the program, it stands to reason Atlas did as well. So why isn't she here? Well, she isn't free-roaming like you are, Victor. When you were released, my guess is that she just defaulted into my personal system, and I just never thought to check. Good afternoon, Simon. Atlas. Hello, Victor. The phrase, good to see you, feels appropriate, however inaccurate. (laughs) Classic Atlas. Atlas? It's been a while. Would you mind giving me a full physiological scan? Happy to. Scan complete. Wow. 
So you're like dying, dying. Yes, I'm aware. I was hoping you could help me understand the intricacies of why my body might be breaking down. Is it directly related to the use of my powers? I'm afraid I can't make that prognosis immediately. I'll need time to process the data I've just scanned. Do you think your powers are the reason you're in a wheelchair? Wait, sorry, that was super rude. I don't know how to... You're the first friend I've ever had that's been... I accept you. Babe, please just stop talking. Right, sorry, I'll be listening. Jesus Christ. My current situation is actually part of the reason I built this synthetic Simon over there. I wanted a way for me to be of service to you all while I was attempting to figure out what was happening to me. Well, he did a pretty good job of convincing us he was you. Only got weird a couple of times. Did he? Synth Simon, what did you do? Hello, all. No one had spoken to me in several minutes, so I entered sleep mode. Hey, I think you learned that one from you, man. Shut up. Dude, the way he sounds exactly like you is kind of creeping me out now that I know what he is. Is there anything you can do to make him sound less like you? Synth Simon, deactivate digital filter. How does this sound? Hey, Robo Simon, go like this. One more time. One more time. We don't stop. Bah. We don't stop. Bah. <laughs> this is the greatest day of my life. Oh, crap, it's Leo. What do you think he wants? Probably something none of us want to deal with right now. Sorry, Leo. Who's Leo? Leo Dobbs. He's in publicity. Okay, I think the auto-tune gag has officially worn out its welcome. Of course. Simon, enter sleep mode, please. It is insane that you were able to build him so fast. Like, is this how productive you are normally when we're not around? Are, are we stopping you from solving global warming? Well, I've actually been working on an artificial replicant for a while before my sudden personal need arose, so it didn't take long to build. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah, just knocking around building a life model decoy in your spare time. Hashtag just mad scientist things. It was actually going to be a surprise Christmas gift. Atlas, fire up Project V. You got it, boss. Whoa. Is that what I think it is? Oh, God, it's another one. It's me. Yes. Well, it's not 100%. You'll notice some of the details are a bit off. I... I did everything I could to make it as accurate as possible, but it's hard when I'm only basing it on photographs and security footage. If I'd had more time, I could have... No, Simon. Stop. This is incredible. It's the least I could do after betraying your trust and compromising our friendship the way I did. Water under the bridge, man. Well, then what would you say to taking this new body for a spin? Wait, now? We're going to do this right now? I don't see why not. Well, I can't exactly argue with that logic. Atlas, ready the android for installation. Victor, your body is ready. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Continue. Ready, Victor? Yeah. Let's do this. Transferring consciousness in three, two... Oh, wow. I have arms. Welcome back, Victor. You want to hop off the table there? How do I... Instinct, just like your human body. I can walk. I'm walking. Victor, you look just like you did when we met you. So how lifelike is this thing, anyway? Mindy, gross. That's not even what I was talking about. Simon, this is seriously incredible. It still needs a few programming tweaks, and we'll probably need to be upgraded now and then, but thank you. Well, e easy does it, Victor. Let's take it step by step, okay? How do your joints feel? Amazing. Like, like college amazing, but better than college. It's, it's like I'm brand new. I say we test this baby out and go have some fun. I mean, really, when's the last time we even had any fun? Leo's calling me now. Must be important. Hey, Leo. What's up? Why aren't you answering any of my calls? Sorry, Leo. Personal stuff. What's up? What's up? On the day of MC3, she asked me what's up. That was today. How did we miss that, Gwen? I don't know. Why I ever left you two in charge, I'll never know. Shut up, Gibson. 
What's MC3? McKinney City Comic Con is the biggest geek culture event of the year. Great! She remembers. Maybe now you can remember the part where you have to be on stage in the exhibit hall in a few hours? You haven't even tried on the new costumes that I worked very hard on making someone else design. Crap. Sorry, Leo. We'll be right there. I'm an idiot. I am an actual idiot. How did I not realize MC3 was today? Did anyone even bother to get us a booth? I mean, between all the superhero stuff and our secret robot buddy over there, we've been a little busy, Gwen. But what about the shop? Ugh, I can't believe this. <sighs> the familiar conflict between superhero responsibilities and the struggles of comic book retail feels like home. Sir, could we get you to move just a little stage left? I won't have any of that sir business, you hear me? I'm a guest in your house today. Now, is the prototype going to be directly behind me or more to my right so I can just walk over to it? That's entirely up to you, sir. I, I mean, David. What the hell is this? Why is he on my stage? William, how nice of you to join us. I thought the Phantom hid under the theater. Oh, I'm just admiring a show coming together at the last minute. I was supposed to take point on this. You were. But then you didn't arrive when you were supposed to and David got restless. You forget he's a natural showman, like me. And the first rule of show business is, the show must go on. Something required my undivided attention. The only thing that should have your undivided attention is this keynote presentation. Where are your priorities? An unexpected issue came up and I had to... Is this how it's going to be working with you? Because I've had easier collaborations. Yeah, I was late. Didn't want to be. Happened anyway. Can we let it go? I've got to where I am today because I can be counted on to do what I've agreed to do exactly when I'm supposed to do it. Because I respect people's time. But your tardiness has wasted our stage manager's time, the time of these Teamsters who are working hard to assist us as best they can, but you have also wasted my time, William. Time is all we have. It is our most precious resource. I don't know what to tell you. Sometimes you drop a plate. You're telling me you've been on time for every meeting you've ever been to? We cannot overprepare for this. You understand? If we blow this keynote, we might as well hang it all up now. We have to grab everyone's imaginations immediately. We will. No one's ever seen anything like this before. Nikola Tesla held the blueprint for a new civilization in his hands. But he didn't know how to sell it. So people didn't know how to buy it. So nobody paid him to make it. And he died without two cents to rub together for warmth. That's why this keynote has to run like a Swiss watch. Well, I'm here now. What do you need? No. You were late to rehearsal. So now you get to watch. Maybe you can use this time to take care of your other business. You know what? Fine. Have fun. Having your priorities straight is an underrated virtue. William Medina isn't exactly a virtuous man. So I'm beginning to learn. Ready to get started, Mr. Gershwin? David, I thought you'd never ask. Can't this stupid thing go any faster? I'm giving her all she's got, Madison, dear. But it's a golf cart. And you're sure this is the way back to Mjolnir's? Way back to what, though? He's talking about the comic book store. You mean Underdog Comics? Oh, that stupid name. I feel like we've passed this identical hallway before. They all look identical. Now, would you not stop backseat driving me? I know where I'm going. I designed these tunnels myself. Also, who are you? Where did you come from? Seriously? We just broke out of prison together. How can you not remember me? Because our powers aren't being dampened anymore, genius. Wait, you're saying I know this girl? Yes, we have met multiple times. I'm usually so good with faces. And names, and putting the two together, I know, I know. Guys, I think I miss jail. Ha! Here we are! And you numpties didn't think I knew where I was going. It's just another grape control room. We've passed like five of these. Aye, but this one is right underneath Underdog Comics. There's a lift right over here. We can take that right up. I can already picture their wee lamp faces when we pop up in the shop. Bless. Ah, oh, missed them. Oi, 
Hey, did you revoke my access? We stole your company and sent you to prison. Of course we revoked your access. Fair play. Uh, can, can you... Yeah, I got it. So, how do we know that we're not going to just get up there to where those underdog dorks are just waiting to surround us and throw us back in a cell somewhere? I wouldn't let that happen. Oh, really? Because you literally already have let that happen. For the love of Pete, when are you lot going to start trusting me? I mean, I literally just led you all through a bloody prison escape. I'm like Steve McQueen, only taller and much more charming. As soon as I open this door, we're all going to be safe and sound back at good old... What's all this, then? Is this... Oh, my God, it is. I can't believe it. We're at McKinney City Comic Con. I never thought I'd be able to go again. You let us straight into a nerd orgy? Just like Steve McQueen. All right, so maybe I took a wrong turn. Several point is, we're back in the city. And look around, half the dopers here are wearing masks. Let's, let's go buy a few that make a beeline for the exit. Oh, man, we just got here. And there's so much to see. We're right next to Artist Alley. I wonder who came this year. <laughs> Look at these Farscape figurines. You guys remember Farscape? Wow. I remember coming to the very first McKinney City Comic Con with my dad back in 81 when it was just a bunch of tables full of long boxes in the basement ballroom of the McKinney Grand. Looks like a lot's changed since then. Yeah. <sighs> I can't get rid of the smell, though. I'm sure they tried. I haven't been to one of these in years. Used to come all the time to be on panels for the show and charge people astronomical fees to have their picture taken with me. And they would. And they'd remember that it happened and that I'm a person who exists. It was nice. Who are you again? Oh, come on. If Lorelai just had a stupid power, this wouldn't keep happening. You know, that's true. Lore, why didn't you ever give yourself a power when you were working on Project Origin? Eh, seemed like a hat on a hat. I'm already pretty whimsical as it is. I just hate these stupid powers so much. At least back at the Supermax, I felt like a regular person again. If you're going to have a breakdown, can we go back down to the control room? The body odor in this place is starting to make my eyes water. Why can you people afford $300 Deadpool statues, but you cannot afford deodorant? Charlotte, uh, do you have a phone I can borrow for a wee tech? Yeah, sure. Uh, Who are you going to call? Well, I don't actually know anyone's number offhand because, honestly, who memorizes the phone number nowadays? So I was just going to look at the shop number and try and get them there. Maybe we can get them to meet us. You know what's funny? I, I, I actually missed that ruddy place. Thank you for shopping at Underdog Comics and have a maximum day because my name is Max and I give you permission. Joel, can I take my lunch break now? Nice try, pal. You already had lunch today. And I'm positive this time because I distinctly remember thinking, Shepherd's pie, huh? That is a heavy lunch. Mother made it for me special. Great. Hope you enjoyed because that was your one and only lunch break today. Oh, the monotony of the dreary nine to five. How I long for the freedom and ease of entrepreneurship. Hey, you said you wanted to be an underdog. This is part of the deal. It's not all wacky super adventures. For every madcap mystery, there's weeks and weeks of low-stakes work shenanigans. Like the time Gwen made us all sit through the mother of all PowerPoint presentations. Uh, It's not always fun, but you gotta do it. Uh, I suppose I have to pick this thing up and answer it now? Yeah, buddy. That's why we're here. This is Underdog Comics, and my name is Max Carmichael. What do you want? Hello? That's the worst phone greeting I think I've ever heard. Max Carmichael? What are you doing there? What have you done to the lambs? How did you take over the store? I do not care what barmy plan you've got cooked up this time, but it won't work. You hear me? I will end you, Carmichael. End you! Who is this? I don't even know what's going on anymore. What are you doing over here? Where is Max Carmichael? Is that English? Jesus Christ, give me the phone. Hey, hey, this is Joel Vickers, assistant store manager. That was our, uh, temp. Joel, it's Lorelai. What is Max Carmichael doing there? Well, he kind of works here now. He's on a redemption arc or something. I don't know. I believe for a few weeks, everything 
Everything's gone topsy. Right. Aren't you in prison or something? I busted out. We're fugitives from the law. Whoa. Living that convict life, huh? Been there. Let me tell you, there are three things you need to focus on if you're going to survive as a fugitive. Details, details, details. Where did I spend money today? Who saw me? Who looked like they were from out of town? Oi, I had your wish to listen to me. Is anyone else at the store right now? No. Everyone was here, but then some voice popped in out of nowhere, and everyone was really happy to see him. Hear him? Anyway, the voice told everybody that Simon was a robot, and only Girl Gibson seemed to know what was going on, but she wouldn't say anything. So then they all left, and Max and I have been manning the store ever since. Can I have anyone's phone number? I need to talk to them right quick. No can do. I actually don't have a phone anymore. I had to barter it for supplies. I have a phone, but the only contacts in it are Billy and my mom. None of the others trust me with their number yet. All right. Well, uh, do you have the numbers written down somewhere? Maybe in case of emergency or something? Emergency? What kind of an emergency could come up at a comic book store? What, am I going to forget to bag and board something? Oh, can you just... (laughs) If you see one of them, just tell them I need to bloody talk to him before I scalp you on the damn genumpty. Aw, I've missed you. I've missed you too! There. You see, Max, we're not in the retail business. We're in the people business. Spectacular. Can I go to lunch? Sure, buddy. Why not? So this is a comic convention, huh? It's, uh, it's colorful. This is not just any comic convention, my friend. This is MC3, the third largest convention in the country. It's a who's who of amateur comic creators hawking books you've never heard of, pop culture influencers, cosplaying as Flavor of the Week characters, and actors looking to make some extra scratch selling photos for 75 bucks a pop. It's basically our mecca. Sounds awful. Oh, it is, Victor. It is. But it's also great. You just have to know where to look. Come on. What's up, Gwen? You look seasick. I just can't believe I forgot about MC3. I I wanted to get a booth for the shop. This is such a missed opportunity. An opportunity for what, exactly? More customers? More business? More money? Gwen, we can't afford any more customers. We barely have enough room for them all now, let alone the merchandise. Yeah, if you expanded your customer base any more, the fire marshal would probably have to shut the place down. If we're going to skip MC3, we definitely picked the right year. I don't know. It just feels wrong somehow. Like, we're not doing enough. Doing as much as we can with what we have. Maybe we can look into getting a larger space, like Joel said, but we just don't have the capital for that right now. I just... I don't want to fail because I'm not working hard enough. You're literally working right now. Yeah. On the superhero stuff, I'm talking about the shop. Well, there's only so many hours in the day. Said the literal time traveler. Mindy, I I know I already thanked you earlier, but it really means a lot that you kept your word. That you let me tell everyone in my own way. Yeah, of course. Are you... is it hard to walk with the cane? Uh, It's challenging, but I can usually make it four to six hours before I start struggling. I use the chair at home because it's easier, but it's good for me to get around without it when I can. Well, you'll definitely get your 10,000 steps in here. I remember coming to MC3 all the time with Jeff when I was a kid. I always pretended to hate it, but I really looked forward to it every year. I've never been to a comic convention before. With the way you've always described your childhood and your dad, that doesn't really surprise me. I always wanted to go. Seemed like it would be advantageous to meet people with similar interests, maybe make some friends. I think that's why I started spending so much time at Mjolnir's in the beginning. Oh, it wasn't Jeff's charming wit? (laughs) No, he would mostly just watch me walk around aimlessly for an hour before demanding that I buy something or leave. Yeah, that sounds about right. (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad things worked out the way they did. Me too. There you are! Oh, finally! Do you have any idea how much interference I've had to run covering for you kooky kids? Sorry, Leo. We've had our hands full lately. When you called, we were in the middle of some personal stuff. Oh, uh, this is our friend Victor. Great. 
yet another member of this endless ensemble. This is getting unwieldy. I don't suppose a strapping, square-jawed, perfect physical specimen like yourself has any uh, superpowers I can mark it? Oh, uh, no. I'm, I'm their uh, per- personal trainer. Oh, personal trainer! That's good! Way to get ahead of the curve, team. I was just about to call the guy that trained Bree Larson to push that jeep up that hill, but you saved me the trouble. Whoa, hey, why is IQ walking with a cane? Is this some sort of gentleman detective angle? Because, frankly, I think it's in poor taste. Oh, uh, sorry, Mr. Dobbs. I had a rock climbing accident yesterday. Rock climbing? Part of their training regimen. Nothing to worry about. Good for upper body strength and problem solving. Uh, I think my fiancé, the astronaut, had to do something very similar when he was training. Only he was underwater. And spinning. Your fiancé is an astronaut? We don't think he's real. Oh, he's real. And he's spectacular. Come on, we got a lot to go over. Now, we don't want a repeat of our coming out party, so I'm nixing the Q&A. That was a mistake. I blame myself. Well, mostly I blame all of you. But I also blame myself. Today, though, is going to be different. We're going to get out there and show these nerds that you're ready to serve and protect the citizens of this city from any and every threat they come across. Every threat? (laughs) What about our civilian lives? Did you think being a superhero was going to be a part-time weekend gig? I guess I just thought there would be more time for other things. Well, think again, sublet. When a problem arises, do you think these people are going to want to call the boring old police with their dreary navy blue uniforms? No! They'll want action. They'll want style. They'll want the underdogs. That's why we're launching an app. An underdogs app? Bingo bango, mood board. Anyone in the city can use it to request assistance or report a crime in progress. Even has an estimated time of arrival. It's like Lyft for superheroes. But we'd be the only Lyft drivers. Well, that shouldn't be a problem for someone with all the time in the world. Right, time zone? Right. But all of that? Nothing compared to the real star of the show. Which is what, exactly? Glad you asked, Hypersense. Your new uniforms! Okay. Wow. Oh my god, they're actually cool! I thought they would be lame! I get a dope-ass leather jacket? Only the best for my underdogs, Sucker Punch. If you're wondering why I'm saying all of your codenames out loud, it's because we're still in the trying-to-make-fetch-happen phase, and somebody's gotta normalize it. I am loving this hoodie look for me. Very Kevin Eastman meets the man without fear, which, if you know the story behind it, is actually a super deep cut reference that I, for one, greatly appreciate. I have knee pads, and elbow pads, and a helmet! I don't have to worry about getting a concussion every time I possess someone! All of your uniforms are designed with your powers in mind. They're as practical as they are stylish. What exactly is the practical application for the scarf in my uniform? Listen, IQ... You're something that the kids refer to as OP, meaning you are so scary powerful that there was nothing we could have added to your uniform that would have actually helped you in any meaningful way. But hey, the scarf matches the overall color scheme, and I think it'll look cool as hell when you're in full TK mode. Yeah, fair enough. Looks comfortable, at least. What's with the vest and tie, Leo? Sublet may be the leader, but when you're all on the field, your powers mean you're usually on crowd control. You need to look like someone who you would want to turn to in a moment of crisis. And nothing says trust and leadership like a vest and a tie. Oh, it is all so perfect. Who designed them? These are the absolutely gorgeous work of our fashion intern, Kevin. So we got them all for a steal. Literally, somebody should really outlaw unpaid interns. But until they do, we're just going to keep on using them. (laughs) Uh, But seriously, we have no intention of actually hiring him. Why would we? He works for free. How much do you love that jacket, Time Zone? Very Time Lord chic, yeah? I mean, I liked it a lot more before I knew what I was supporting. Well, it looks great on you. Go ahead and try them on, everybody. We want to make sure it all fits before we hit the stage after the Swift Nostalgia presentation. Swift Nostalgia. As in Nostalgia Entertainment? Whoa, wait, what? Hey, didn't you guys used to work there? Yeah, and it sounds like Billy's using Nostalgia to announce some kind of collaboration. He better not touch my Liberty series or I swear to God I'm going to- You didn't even write those! It's the principal, Mindy. 
well, I don't know exactly what they're doing. Uh, I just heard they're dropping all the info on some hot new product they're pushing. It's something called, um, The Game. The what? what? Oh, thank God. I mean, no. Oh, that totally sucks for you guys. Why do I feel like we've been walking around in circles? I do rather feel like I've seen that particular booth before. Well, that's because I like to cover the con floor in a spiral pattern. See, everyone else tends to just go up and down the aisles to see everything. But if you talk yourself out of buying something from a booth and later regret it, doubling back takes forever. In the spiral method, it's just around another corner. Cosmo? Please tell me we haven't been following you around this whole time as you lead us around this con so you could shop instead of getting us out of here. Uh... You don't even have any money! I like the window shop. Do you see any windows here? That's a figure of speech, and you know it. Cosmo, dear. I think we're all just a wee bit tired, what with all the breaking out of a supermax prison and all, and it's just rather frustrating when you're using our escape routes as a personal mall of America. It's just we've been cooped up for so long with supermax and the bunker before that, it felt good to just be out, doing what I wanted, it felt normal, and I haven't felt like that in a long time. I get that mate, I do, but now isn't really the most convenient time for it. Well why not? We're escaped convicts, you idiot! But I thought we were waiting for the underdogs. Lorelai couldn't get through to them. They're not coming. This stranger I've never met before is exactly right. Ugh, I need to lie down. We're probably all fighting crying. They could be anywhere in the city. Well, I might not know where they are right now, but I do know where they are going to be. What's that, big man? Look at the panel schedule. Right here. It says the underdogs are having a panel later today in the exhibition hall. Result! Oh, this is bloody brilliant. There's a chance they're already here, walking around, arguing about something daft. Bless. Let's spread out and find them. I don't think that's the right move here. We know where they're going to be. Let's just meet them there. Oh, good thinking, Charlotte. I don't know, boss lady. If we want to get to where the panel is, we got to go all the way over to the exhibit hall. That's through Artist Alley and about 50,000 people walking shoulder to shoulder. It's going to take some time getting over there. And one of us is still a recognizable celebrity. I prefer Gallabout Town. Do I know you, by the way? She's Janet Stokely, and you've met her about a million times. Oh, you're Janet Stokely! I know you, I've read your file. You know what? Who's to say? Maybe I'm not. Reality's just one big farce anyway. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just got distracted by that very distinguished fellow in the Rooney Door cosplay. Have you lot read the Liberty books? I almost played Liberty in the movie. Really? Who are you? <sighs> this gag is going to literally kill me. Okay, I can't deal with this anymore. Janet, I'm dampening your powers. Janet? Lorelai? You remember me? Of course I remember you, Janet Stokely. We've been through so much together, how could I possibly forget? Because of my stupid powers! Oh, I remember those too. This is amazing. Somehow, I think this is worse. Just let her have this medicine. Fine. She does seem happy, I guess. I'm sorry, did someone just say Janet Stokely? I feel like I haven't heard that name in like a year. Oh, um, hi. I'm Janet. Oh my god, it's you! I was obsessed with your show in college. I'd watch it before bed. It was legit therapeutic. That's so incredible. Thank you. Can I get a selfie? Oh, sure. Anything for a fan. This is amazing. I can't believe it's you. Is that Janet Stokely? Hi, it's me. I thought you were dead. Nope, not dead. I just... Well, it's kind of a long story, but I'm here now. Ow! Hey, watch it! Janet Stokely? For real? Yep, it's really me. Uh, Janet? Oh man, um, so this turned into a monkey's paw kind of situation real quick, huh? We're supposed to be laying low. I didn't want this to happen. I didn't know she was this famous. Everybody follow me. I hate this. 
I hate every part of this. First, my inmates escape from my inescapable supermax prison, essentially guaranteeing that I'm going to lose funding. And then I come here, and David's on stage playing house with my plant, my product, my company. Who the hell does he think he is? Hey, hey, what are you, asleep? Hey, come on, wake up. Hello, Billy. Just resting my eyes. Don't. No one calls me that. Not anymore. Sorry. William, what can I do for you? I'm trying to figure out David's angle. Do you know anything? Do you know anything? Has it occurred to you that he might have been upset when you were late this morning? Yeah, you know, it crossed my mind around the same time I wondered if anyone on this planet actually enjoys being around you. Maybe not, but at least I rarely have to get up to make my own drinks. Thanks for this, by the way. God damn it, are you incapable of physically occupying space if you're not annoying someone? Is that how your powers work? <laughs> you know, you're a lot funnier than people give you credit for. Have you ever thought about doing stand-up? You know, if you ever wanted to do a set at the Laugh Riot, I know a guy. Or maybe you could start a podcast. I truly hate everything about you. Hmm. Is there supposed to be something happening on the con floor right now? How should I know? Why? Because something is happening on the con floor right now. Huh. Well, maybe this day won't end up being so bad after all. How's that? That right there, center of the commotion, is Janet Stokely. Standing next to her are Cosmo Peters, Madison Powers, and Lorelai and Charlotte Swift. Guess now I know how the man to bypass my systems. All oh, my rotten eggs in one basket. Come on, let's get down there. We're finishing this. You know, as great as that sounds, I'm kind of in the middle of something. Yeah, not a question. Come on. Oh, you really are a bastard. You know that? That's how I'm still alive. Oh, they done did it now. I am going to sue them so hard, I'll sue them until they don't even remember what it's like to not be sued. You have no idea what a lawsuit is, do you? Of course I do, Gwen. I used to watch Boston Legal with my mom. That's one of the shows I used to watch with Atlas. She liked to point out all the logic errors. Actually, she did that with all the shows we watched together. When we watched Twin Peaks, I thought she was going to explode. This is all my fault. I'm the one who brought the game to Nostalgia Toys in the first place. Hey... Don't be so hard on yourself, babe. Yeah, man, don't worry. We're gonna take these bastards down and save our beautiful child together. This will not stand. Ready when you are, David. Let's get this show on the road. Simon, what's wrong? I, I thought I just saw... No. No, it, it couldn't have been. It's starting! And now, please welcome Holt Tech founder and CEO, David Holt. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Whoa, wait. David Holt? Simon, do you know this guy? Thank you. Thank you so much. Please, please sit down now. You are all too much. I do. David Holt is my father. Eat by Night is executive produced by Scott Corelli, Nick Jimenez, and Cassandra Fredrickson. Co-executive produced by Ray Ruzzo and Chelsea Kern. Associate produced by Matt Bennett. Starring Matt Mazel as Elliot Markowitz, Ray Ruzzo as Gwen Allen, Chris O'Connor as Jeff Gibson, Andrew Ball as Simon Holt, Morgan Spencer as Mindy Gibson, Chelsea Kern as Gretchen West, Naomi Wong as Lorelai Swift, Scott Tofty as Max Carmichael, Jay Malone as Victor Conrad, Nick Jimenez as William Medina, and Zach Luna as Joel Vickers. Also starring Rachel Gatlin as Charlotte Swift, Brian Brown as Nathan Gershwin, Kristen Miller as Janet Stokely, 
Paul Mackey as Cosmo Peters, Natalie Van Sistine as Madison Powers, Brad Beauchamp as David Holt, Billy McCartney as Leo Dobbs, and Leslie Beauchamp as Atlas. Additional voice work by Alisa Petrie, Tal Meneer, Lydia Utter, Kaylin McCabe, and Jeff Raymer. Casting by Chelsea Kern. Comic Cons, written by Scott Corelli and Nick Jimenez. Directed by Ray Russo. Edited by Scott Corelli. Geek by Night theme by Zach Gibson. Additional score and final mix by Scott Toffey. Credits read by Brian Brown. Geek by Night, created by Scott Corelli. All characters in this work are entirely fictitious. Any resemblance to real persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Copyright 2020, Doing Genre Productions. Thanks for listening.